Today we're starting the introduction of ratios. A ratio is just a comparison of two quantities. Sometimes we will get a picture. For example, I'm going to give you rectangles and circles. And they would ask you, what is the ratio of rectangles to circles? So the first thing I would have to look at is how many rectangles do I have? Well, I have one, two, three, four rectangles. And one, two, three, three circles. And my question is, what is the ratio of rectangles to circles? It's, a, it's important that we look at the order in which they ask, because whichever one we see first, we're going to write first. So what I mean by that is they ask for the rectangles first, the circles are second. So we're going to write it in the same order that they ask. So I know that for my rectangles, there are four. For circles, there are three. So when I write a ratio, there's really three different ways to write it. I could answer that the ratio to rectangles to squares is four, two, three. I could also write it with a semicolon, and the semicolon means the same thing, four, two, three. Or I could write it four, two, three, like a fraction. So these are three different ways to write. And most of the time what we will use is the fraction version of that. Okay, so let's look at an example of what it might look like in a problem. So you have this sheet, and remember we're only going to fill out what we do in the video. The rest you just leave blank and we'll go over it in class. So the first thing I'd want to do is add up all my data. We're not going to do that for the video. I'm going to give you a couple of numbers so that we can start off. And then we'll end up counting the rest in class. But um, let's fill in for diamonds. There are 24 diamonds. For squares, there are 16. So if I go down to this number seven right here, it says write the following ratios, but it adds lowest terms. So I see diamonds to squares, and I know we just wrote there are 24 diamonds to 16 squares. And I'm going to keep it in the order in which they put it out there for me, diamonds to squares. I'm not going to flip-flop them. So I could write it all the different, the three different ways I talked about with the word two, with the semicolon or fraction, and we usually use a fraction. So it would be 24, keeping it in order, diamonds, 16 squares. So 24 to 16 would be diamonds to squares. Now lowest terms, what they're talking about is they want you to find the base. The base is just like a reduced fraction. They want you to end up with the smallest numbers that you can get. And so even though the ratio is 24 to 16 here, if we reduce 24 and 16, 8 goes into both of those. So I know if I divide by 8 and divide by 8, well 24 divided by 8 is 3, and 16 divided by 8 is 2. So it means the same thing, very similar to an equivalent fraction, is it means the same thing. Every three diamonds will have two squares. So if we have 24 diamonds, we have 16 squares. That's all it means. It's the ratio of how many you have 
based on another quantity. So three diamonds to two squares is the same as 24 diamonds to 16 squares, very much like an equivalent fraction. Okay, so let's go all the way to the bottom. You're going to leave all of this blank and wait for class, but I do want to go all the way to the bottom just to show you a word problem and what it would look like. So if you look at 21, 21 says out of 16 customers, 12 ordered juice. What is the ratio of juice drinkers to others? Okay, so we have 16 customers, 12 ordered juice. So the first thing I always do is write down what's important. All my information, us customers. We could have shortened that a little bit. We don't need to write all those words out, but 16 customers and then 12 order juice. Okay, what is the ratio of juice drinkers to others? Well, here I'm identifying what type of problem it is. It's a ratio, meaning I'm comparing two quantities. They want juice drinkers to others. So what I read first, I write first. Well, I read here juice drinkers first. It's not going to necessarily be what I read first over here because over here is just gathering information. I know I have 16 customers, 12 of them ordered juice. So if I come over to the juice drinkers, I'm going to write down, I know that there were 12 juice drinkers to others. Well, I have to figure out who are the others? Who is this right here? Well, if they didn't order juice, they ordered something else. We don't know what that is and we don't care what that is. We just know that they didn't order juice. Well, how many didn't order juice? Well, if you look at these two numbers here, if 12 ordered juice and there were 16 customers. Ms. White, total, if you're in the building, could you please come to the front office? Ms. White, if you're in the building, could you please come to the front office? That means there were four others who ordered something different. So we would use four others. Okay, so how would I write that as a ratio? I'm going to write that there were, again, in order of what they wrote, there's 12 juice drinkers to others. So that means it's 12 to 4. But now I need to make sure is that the base, is that as small as we can get it? Well, no, the base we can get smaller because I look at 12 and 4 and I know that 4 goes into 12 and I know 4 goes into 4. So my base would be 3 to 1, meaning for every 3 customers that order juice, 1 ordered something else. Okay, let's try another one, the number 22. Of the 10, 10 members on a team, two are girls. What's the ratio of girls to all the members? And then there's a second piece to that of girls to boys. Okay, so let's gather information first. We have 10 members on a team, two are girls. Okay, so here's my information. I have 10 members, which really means total. Two of them are girls. What they're asking me is what is the ratio, so I'm identifying what kind of problem it is, of girls to all of the members. Okay, so here they're telling me what my ratio is going to be, and I, what I read first, I write first. Again, not reading first, writing first, these two, because this one I'm still just gathering information. It's once they're asking me the question, what's the ratio of girls to all members? So girls, there were two. All of the members, there were 10. So my ratio would be two to 10. Again, I need to make sure I have the base. And that is not the base because that can be reduced. I can see that in both of these, 
a share two, which would give me one to five, meaning for every one girl, there are a total of five people on the team. The second question they asked us of girls to boys. Okay, so here's another ratio of girls to boys. Well, in my information, I go back and I notice there were two girls. I'm going to write what I read to boys. Well, that information I don't have over where I collected my data. I've got two girls and 10 members, but I'm not identifying the boys. Well, you have to think if I've got 10 people on the team, two are girls. Well, that means the other eight members have to be boys because they're either going to be boys or girls. So I know that I can input that information here and I'm going to set it up like I'm reading it. Girls to boys, meaning it would be two to eight. And I need to make sure that I find my base. Is that the smallest that we can get? No, because I can see they both share a two, so I can divide it by two, which would give me one to four, meaning for every one girl, there would be four boys on the team. Okay, that's all we're going to do today with ratios. Just remember to leave everything blank that we did not go through on the video and to bring your shapely ratios paper back with you. And if you have questions or thoughts or see patterns, write down anything that we can discuss in class.